On today's show, we'll be talking about healthy baby food and designing creative spaces. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and this is Extraordinary Women TV. My first guest today is Jennifer Carlson Bro. She is the founder of Baby Gourmet. You'll meet her in a moment. Later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular good to know minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip. You'll hear Jennifer's. In the second half of the show, you are going to meet an architect. So stay with us for that. Well, Jennifer, hello. Nice to have you here Hi. on the show today. Thank you for having me. Now, you are the founder of Baby Gourmet, uh, and I know you're based in Calgary. You're here in the studio in Toronto. What brings you to Toronto? You know, I do a lot of business in Toronto, so I'm always happy to come back. Well, we're happy yep. you're here because you got to come to the studio today. I know, I had time. So great. Baby Gourmet, what is Baby Gourmet? Uh, baby Gourmet really is an, it's an organic, uh, great tasting baby food. Um, something, that, something that parents and moms and dads can actually feel really good about feeding their babies. Well, it is. yeah, and you know, we were talking about, you know, sort of as we were preparing for the show, um, uh, I mean, there aren't a whole bunch of options out there for mothers um, with young kids, uh, at least not until Baby Gourmet. Right. Um, how, how did you come up with this idea of creating, you know, really healthy food for kids? I mean, was there, was there uh, a big gap in the marketplace? Yeah, there was, um, there re really was no alternative. There was nothing out there that um, really stepped outside of the traditional, which was jarred, um, jarred baby food that really was kind of lacking luster, flavor, quality, texture, everything. There was really a hole in the marketplace for something that tasted good. So that's kind of what I, I narrowed in on. So now the idea came to you when, you when you had your first child. Yes. So what was that moment when you said, oh my God, I really, I've got I've to make something healthy or I want to do something with this? Well, you know, it's, it's funny, I get asked this a lot, but it was really um, a jar of green beans that I had bought from Superstore, from Loblaws. Right. And when I cracked it open to feed it, it you know, it kind of was a little muddled on top and I thought I would never eat this myself. How could I possibly, in good conscience, give it to my baby? And I decided from that moment on that I was going to make all of her food from scratch. And uh, I have a passion for food and for cooking and, and I undertook that. And it was very soon after that a lot of moms in my mom group noticed what I was making and had asked me if, I would, if they could pay me to make theirs. And that was really how it started. So now, what were you doing? I mean, you've been an entrepreneur for a long time. I mean, what was um, your area of focus before you started um, Baby Gourmet? I mean, what were you doing in business? To be honest with you, I um, really, this was my real big first shot at being an entrepreneur. I mean, I was as a kid. I had the crazy ideas as a kid from, you know, your typical lemonade stands to starting a dog walking business to uh, baking and selling at arts and crafts sales, doing whatever I could to make money, really, at, at starting at age seven. So I had these crazy ideas when I was a kid and um, later in life, I really didn't get an idea. I always knew in my mind that when I had a great idea I would do it in 110 percent but I, the idea hadn't come. So I was really just working a nine to five office job that was very unfulfilling but I always had the dream in the back of my mind that when I get the idea I will do it. And yeah. So did you then believe somewhere in your heart and you knew you could be really successful? It was just a matter of what it was? You, to be honest, it was. I know what yeah. I'm capable of and I know my work ethic and I know that when I find something that I'm passionate about, I will go hard at it. But I just ha didn't have that idea. And so I knew that when I did, I, I would do it full force. So now with, with um, when you started uh, then with recipes um, yeah. for Baby Gourmet, what was your first recipe? Do you remember? Do I, you know, I thought about this. I, I probably the basic sweet potato broccoli. I know that broccoli was the very first food that I gave both my kids. So it started with a very simple puree, but then um, it was fruity chicken and rice was this next one that had kind of mango and apricots and chicken and cinnamon, um, rice, tomato, cumin, like some really cool combinations and flavors. 
that was the first one that I that I made that my daughter loved and I thought wow this isn't just your basic you know beef and broth this is something with great flavor great texture she actually loves it there's got to be a ton of babies and moms out there that would love to feed this to their babies so it was you know coming up with kind of neat recipes that I knew that that was another product that that should be out there that babies would take to so now this didn't become really big immediately it was there was a progression um, yeah. with this with this company so you you had this idea you started um, tinkering in your kitchen and then you yeah. went to the uh, farmers market in Calgary and yes. that's you start to sell the product there yeah so what was the thing that really helped it take off you know well it was word of mouth so mm. the one thing with mums is that they're very viral when they find something they like yeah. they tell everyone about it so that's what helped it take off um, but for me you know, I really, I knew the opportunity was there and I knew there was a huge opportunity and I always visioned my food in mass market that every baby should have access to it. Um, but I needed to do my homework and my research and the best place to do that was just selling on the weekends, making my food, selling at the farmer's market and dealing with mums directly to really understand right. what they want, what they're looking for. Um, it, the farmer's market was my direct market research. And so that's how, that's how it started. And it you know, obviously didn't happen overnight. I did that for a couple of years and, and um, built a really successful local brand. But that wasn't enough. Every baby needed it. So you know, that's when it kind of took a few more years to, to plan um, how I take my idea and make it, you know, get it on the shelves. So can you give us a sense then of the, um, the size or magnitude of this, of this business um, and how it's grown today? Yeah, we, um, well, we launched uh, um, national, so across the country, about 17 months ago. And in 17 months, we've managed to capture um, approximately 10% of the market share, cash market share, so dollar value. And um, we are in all the major retailers, so Walmart, Superstore, Loblaws, um, Metro, Sobeys. We, we're kind of in, have made it to about 80% of where all baby food is sold in Canada. So we've done tremendous in, in the last 17 months. And that kind of gives you an idea of the volumes that we're moving. So what is, what is the, it that really makes this product um, different than anything else that's out there? So well, unique. You know, ultimately, it's quality. It's taste. It actually tastes good. Like it is food that you would you would taste yourself and think, oh my God, I would eat that. I could feed that to my baby. Next time on, a, I'm on a, a road trip. I'm going to grab some ba baby gourmet. Then. <laughs> Can't believe I don't have any here. You should be eating it right now. It. Uh, you'd be surprised. So it's yeah. taste, and it really comes down to um, how we process it. It's. Um, we're heavily involved with our quality control and our, our sourcing of ingredients. So my sister, who's a part of, my, of the business as well, she is responsible for sourcing the best ingredients we can find. We taste everything before it goes to production. So we, we pay a lot of attention. There's a lot of love and care that goes into our food, right. which is different from the rest. And uh, it also comes in a really convenient pouch that is resealable and you can kind of squeeze it on a spoon and serve it. or. Uh, you can feed directly from the pouch. So it's got a really unique, innovative package that separates us from the traditional. So we, had a, we have a few really good uh, features that separate us. Now, what are some of the formulas? There's f um, man what's on the menu? What's on the menu? What's on the menu? Yeah. Um, you know, we've got. One of our biggest sellers is uh, vanilla banana berry risotto. Right. So Sounded vanilla really good, banana, actually. a little yeah. bit of. Um, Right, yeah, they're really neat formulas. We've got an old-fashioned apple crisp. Our number one seller is Juicy Pear Garden Greens. It's a great way to get spinach and broccoli in combined. But it's really, you know, the formula and how well thought out the, the combinations are. So we try to combine fruit and veggies in each one so that babies are getting vegetables along with their fruits. Um, we've got um, some great new recipes that are coming out. We've got a vegetable beef barley, chicken minestrone. Uh, yeah, we've got lots of neat stuff. Do you think that um, experts um, are uh, have mothers thinking that maybe they don't know how to cook for their their you know babies and and really young children that that they need to be looking for you know commercial food or or that um, 
Is it just really a matter of convenience, or do you think that? Um, no, I think that a lot of a lot of people advocate that you should make your own, right. and I'm one of them. I think if mm -hmm. you can make your own food and you can make it taste great, then I think I think it's wonderful. Um, for us, I think we're a convenient factor, so we want to make mom's life a little bit easier, and we want to reduce their guilt as well. Because a lot of times with you know when, with babies, you feel guilty that you're not doing enough, or you're not. You know, I should be making their food from scratch, but I don't have time, and then you feel guilty if you're not. And um, so our food is a convenience factor. Uh, it can supplement if you make your own food. But um, yeah, I just I think that. I think that that's what, you know, that's why moms buy us. It's something that, that, that they can feel good about. Now, Jennifer, we're just going to take a quick break, uh, and that means it's my good to know minute. And yep. I know you've got a great success tip. So go ahead. You know, my, um, my tip is, is the 80-20 rule. So I really focus on doing the very best I can at really anything from how I run my company to how hard I work out to, um, you know, how I feed my kids. I do my very best 80% of the time, and then the other 20%, if I'm not up to par, then I cut myself some slack because we're surrounded with too much guilt these days. We need to give ourselves a break. Yeah. Well, that's good to know that 80 20 rule cut yourself some slack. <laughs> we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more with Jennifer Carlson Bro, founder of Baby Gourmet. Welcome back to the show. I'm Shannon Skinner and I'm speaking with Jennifer Carlson Bro, who is the founder of Baby Gourmet, um, a very healthy um, baby food uh, brand. Now, just during the break, we were talking about your connection to the Golden Globes and the Oscars. Mm hmm. Yeah, we, um, we were featured at the Gifting Suite for new moms and parents um, for the pre Oscars and Golden Globes events. It was really neat. It was a great opportunity for us to give out our products to a bunch of the celebrities in LA and uh, have them tasting our food and getting their babies to eat it. So that was kind of it was it was fun. Can you can you tell us what any specific celebrity said? Oh my gosh, I can't remember what they said. They I mean they loved the product. Their babies yeah. were eating it and they got it on camera and um, no, we just had great feedback. Like I, but I can't remember what like. Like specific, exactly, yeah. So, in terms of um, now, you know, as an entrepreneur, and a, and a successful one, because um, you know, according to the stats, uh, many women f actually fail as entrepreneurs. Even though um, we make up a lot of entrepreneurs in Canada, um, a lot of women financially fail in business. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have done really well. But I'm sure that at some point there's been a significant challenge there for you or some obstacle that just plunked itself right down in front of you. On a daily basis, yes. <laughs> it was on a daily basis, yes, okay. It, it, those, those things happen, I mean, catastrophic events, not daily, but uh, they happen frequently. So it's managed, it's learning how to deal with them and right. trying to recognize them before they get there, but it's how you handle a situation. So instead of thinking, when something horrible happens, I'm going to crumble and die. I think, how can I look at this as a, as a challenge, as an opportunity? What can I do to be better? Who do I need to enlist to help me solve this problem? Um, which I think answers your question in that, uh, you know, a big obstacle that's happened and how has it made my, me successful, especially when women fail in business, especially when it comes to financing. Um, I recognized early on what my skill set was and what I was really good at and where I struggled and, and where I lacked experience. And I surrounded myself with people that had the experience that I was lacking in. And I got them on board and sold them on the passion of the company. And I got them excited about baby food. Believe it or not, I got a group of men excited about baby food. And uh, I surrounded myself with the experience I was lacking. And with that, I was able to raise all the capital that I needed. And that's what really set it. So that was kind of a, a real monumental time in the in the early, well, the mid mid growth part of the company. Um, but I think that th that's how I overcame it. I just recognized the the areas that I needed to improve on, and and as soon as I did that, the investors came in. 
Brilliant. So you recognized where you have a weakness and yeah. you know your strengths and then you really yeah. um, surrounded yourself with people who could... Who filled the holes. That's great. So that yeah. I, you know, we could build a, a team that everyone brings, contributes something different from the other. Right. Um, and isn't that something that Ford said uh, as well? Um, uh, and then that's what he did in terms of surrounding himself with all the experts. He never had the answers, but exactly. he, he could call upon people around him. Well, it's funny because someone asked me today, how did you know how to do that? How did you know? Well, I didn't. I just asked people. I yeah. surrounded myself with a network of resources that had the answers. And the great thing is those people were a part of my team. Right. And uh, yeah, it's still like that today. I'm learning every day. What has been the greatest blessing for you in your life? I mean, a, a given is my children. I, I, that they're my inspiration. They're the reason I started this. I came up with this idea. Mm -hmm. um, they're the reason I do what I do. But aside from the obvious, it would definitely have to be that I am able to every day get up and work on a job that I am so passionate about. I'm in love with my company. I love what it stands for. I love that I'm able to make a difference in the way people feed their children. I'm excited that I'm in a position where I can donate products to uh, less fortunate. I'm just, I've put myself in a wonderful place that I love my job and not everyone can say that. So I, I feel so blessed every day that, that, I've, that I'm here. And you, you actually um, raised something interesting. I, I know that you, you give back. Mm -hmm. You work a lot with charities with, it, with the, um, the food banks. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's a great place to be. You, it's always in the back of your mind that when you're starting a company, gosh, I'd really love to one day be able to give back. And that's, it's so rewarding. I mean, when you're at, the, at that point, when, you say, yeah. okay, finally, I have something to give. I have something I can give back. Yeah. Um, you know, seeing it on the shelf is one thing, but when you get to a place where you're able to contribute and go over and above, it's it's so rewarding. So it's yeah, it's a it's a exciting part of the business. So for you, what would be your your vision from here with 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 where you take Baby Gourmet? You know, I I really don't want to stop with babies. I mean, uh, my kids are now kids; they're not babies anymore. And I would love to continue developing products that are convenient for kids, but ones that taste great, that are healthy, that again a mom or dad can feel great about buying for their kids. Uh, stuff that isn't loaded with sugars and a little bit more natural. That's where we're we're moving towards. So. And, and when you were starting the, um, the, the, the product line, you were tasting it. You were tasting every ingredient yeah. um, as you were creating the, the product, which is maybe not exactly what happens with other uh, larger companies right. um, that are mass manufacturing baby right. food. Well, I don't know if a lot of the, the people at the helms of those companies are really that concerned with how their food tastes, and, and that's just a part of my my mantra and what what means the most to me so um, I know it's not scalable I can't do that forever but you hire people that can and you teach them how to do it so that you know we're working on that and your sister is part of the the company as she well. is yeah yeah I am um, you know my sister's been a great support I came to her with the idea when I had it about six and a half years ago and uh, I said Jill I've got my idea I've got the idea what do you think of this and she has four children of her own. So I knew she's been down the block of feeding their babies and she liked my idea and came on board and, and we've worked together ever since. So Jill is um, really involved with our new product development. We work closely together. And like I said, four children, she, she works part time, but she's uh, a great part of the team. Yeah. And so if you were to do it all over again, is there anything that you would change? You know, that comes down to the question of, do you ever have regrets in life? And uh, no, I, 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 I think every, every experience you go through is some kind of learning experience. And would I change anything? No, because I think everything I've experienced has brought me where I am today. And I'm, I'm still learning, I'm still growing, I'm passionate, I love what I do, I'm, you know, I'm in a good place in my life. So would I, ch I, I don't think I would change anything. It, 
good and bad. It's where I am. Well, you know, Jennifer, I have really enjoyed um, this time um, with you and getting to know more about uh, your business and uh, being a successful entrepreneur. So I want to thank you for being on the show today. No problem. Thank you for having me. And wish you all the best with Baby Gourmet and beyond. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, for more information about uh, Jennifer Carlson Bro, you can visit my website at extraordinarywomentv.com where on her episode page you will see this interview, her bio, and, and more information uh, about, about her company. Uh, and of course, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, you're going to meet an architect, and we'll be talking about creative design and creating de designing creative spaces, so stay with us.